Apple may be developing long-distance charging technology, IBM is officially the proud owner of the weather company, iOS and Android users now have Spotify video, and more. It's Friday, January 29th, and this is Crunch Report. Hello everyone, TGIF. Apple is building technology that would allow iPhone and iPad owners to charge their devices wirelessly without needing to plug them into the wall or even on a charging mat. This is according to a report from Bloomberg, which claims this wireless charging technology could work over long distances as well, although how long those distances are was not specified. If the report is correct, Apple devices could ship with this technology by next year. That would obviously not include the upcoming iPhone 7, which is due for release this September. Current wireless charging phones don't require a direct power connection, but do have to be in contact with a mat or a charger. A true wireless charging solution would be superb, especially if the rumors about the headphone jack disappearing in future iPhone models is true. IBM continues to expand its Watson AI business and its presence in the Internet of Things, or IoT. Today, the company announced it successfully closed its acquisition of The Weather Company. That's the giant weather, media, and data group. Terms of the deal weren't disclosed. It was originally reported around $2 billion, but sources close to IBM have since told us that number is off. So anyway, here's what changes right away. The Weather Company's cloud platform will now run on IBM's cloud data centers, not on Amazon Web Services as it did in the past. Cloud is part of IBM's wider push into data services and Watson's Internet of Things business. IBM also plans to expand weather.com into five more markets, including China, India, and Brazil immediately, and then integrate it into IBM's 45 global cloud centers. The Weather Channel, which is likely the weather company product that you know best, is actually not included in this deal at all. But as part of the sale, under a long-term contract, it will license weather data forecasts and analytics now owned by IBM. Okay, back to Apple News. There's more Apple News today. The Financial Times is reporting that Apple has acquired an augmented reality startup called Flyby Media, which allows mobile phones to sort of see the world around them by scanning objects in the real world, like a hat or a, or a sign or a poster, something written on a building, etc., and then save those items to a collection of shared objects, and then they can talk to their friends about it. Flyby Media actually worked with Google in the past and was the first consumer-facing application to use image recognition from Google's project Tango, as well as being its vision-based software partner. Flyby Media has offices in both New York and Palo Alto, or did anyway, and had raised about $13.78 million in outside investment from Chart Ventures Partners and CNF Investments. The Financial Times also reports that Apple has been building prototypes of possible headset configurations for several months now, and we already know that the company just hired a top AR and VR specialist, Doug Bowman. Apple bought AR startup Meteo last year, as well as motion capture technology maker FaceShift. It also bought a motion sensing company, PrimeSense, way back in 2013. So I think they're taking this all seriously. Okay, Spotify Video is now live on iOS after a rollout on its Android app earlier this week. So it means Spotify originally announced its plans to move beyond music into video in May of last year. Now we're getting that clips podcasts, news, other kinds of video to its overall product. So now within the browse option, users also have an option called shows. So you can watch videos from providers like ESPN and Comedy Central, the BBC, Vice Media, Maker Studios, MTV, and lots of other usual suspects. Spotify says that content will be varied by market and can be tailored to users' individual tastes as well. By the way, this new feature is still rolling out, so don't be alarmed if you don't see it yet. It is new. Spotify is valued at over $8.5 billion and is reportedly raising another $500 million. It claims 20 million paying subscribers, with new reports putting that number closer to $28 million. Okay, everybody, it's Friday, and it's been quite a week, so let's celebrate something. NASA's Mars Opportunity rover just passed its 12-year anniversary on the red planet, and that's amazing because the rover was only designed to operate for about 90 days. 90 days became 12 years. After a six and a half month journey from Earth, Opportunity entered the Martian atmosphere and used some parachutes and retro rockets and airbags to land safely on the Mars surface back in 2004, January in fact. NASA originally believed the rover was only good for 90 Martian days because of the extreme level of dust on the planet. You guys all saw the Martian, right? So you know that's true. The dust was predicted to build up on Opportunity's solar panels and then eventually the rover would be unable to receive power. But 
Every so often, little dust devils, big ones actually, big columns of air swept over the rover and, and Mars itself and cleaned off the dust from the solar panels. So it lives. NASA paid $400 million to build Opportunity and get it on the surface of Mars in the first place. So the fact that it's lasted so long out there is very remarkable. It still does cost about $14 million per year to operate Opportunity. So it's not like the rover is just roaming free. It is the little rover that could. And that is the report for the day and the week. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. This episode was presented by Go90. Crunch Report airs every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on TechCrunch.com. You can find us on iTunes and on YouTube as well. We'll see you Monday.